There's a reason people call them fake news. CNN's first interview with Kamala Harris was, yes, bad for Kamala, but it was also just as bad for CNN because it exposed and laid bare CNN's double standards for interviewing Republicans versus interviewing Democrats. I made a compilation video of Dana Bash's questions for Kamala Harris, and then we're going to compare that with her questions and her arguments against J.D. Vance. And I think you will find it astonishing, the difference between her style her substance, her delivery, her delivery, and how aggressive she was with each candidate. Look, I get we have freedom of the press, but the press serves a vital role in our political machine, in our country. If we want to be an informed populace, if we want people to be involved in politics and know what their politicians are up to and doing, to be able to hold their politicians accountable, then we need a free, fair, and healthy press. And this right here, I think, proves that our press is anything but healthy. Now, before I show you that compilation video, uh, I want to show you a clip that proves that CNN was lying. And here's the thing. They lied about a tiny detail. And if they're lying about something that small, then how can we trust them with issues that require so much more trust? Take a look at this clip and notice the lie. Thank you about your opponent, Donald Trump. Um, I was a little bit surprised. People might be surprised to hear that you have never interacted with him, met him face to face. Mm -hmm. That's going to change soon. But what I want to ask you about is what he said last month. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political purposes, mm -hmm. questioning a core part of your identity. Yeah. Any same old tired playbook. Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. CNN claimed that this interview was live. But that's the thing. We all know that this interview was pre-taped. It was famously taped beforehand. It was about, what, 41 minutes long, and yet CNN only broadcast 18 minutes? In other words, over half of the interview was edited out and left on the cutting room floor. What else isn't CNN showing us? Why won't they release the whole transcript? And did they edit the interview, manipulate the footage in such a way to make Kamala Harris look good? I don't know, but if we had the transcript, we, we'd know. We'd know how Kamala Harris really did. And that's the whole point. Because if CNN is willing to lie about that tiny detail, about the interview being live, when it was clearly pre-taped, then what else can't we trust them about? What else are they misrepresenting? Think of it this way. Let's say an undecided viewer tuned in, right? And they've heard all this conflicting messaging about Kamala Harris's temperament and her qualifications and her ability to be president of the United States. Well, if they knew it was pre-taped, they'd be, you know, skeptical of the answers. But if they thought it was live, they might say, oh, you know, she wasn't as bad as I thought she was going to be. It wasn't a train wreck as bad as Joe Biden's debate. I guess she's good. You know, perception matters. Expectation matters. And by putting that live tab on the bottom, CNN, they, they really shot their credibility more than it's already been destroyed. Not good for them. Also, Kamala Harris's answer for that question was complete nonsense. You know, the question, just to remind you all, the question was um, her response to Donald Trump insinuating that she turned black. I mean, and, and she, she just said no, no comment. Next question. I mean, she didn't prepare for that. They didn't see that coming. For anyone else, that would have been an opportunity to, you know, share their story or to give a counter argument. Um, and Dana Bash, you know, she could have asked a follow up question just off the top of my mind. Uh, Miss Harris, you've been on camera claiming that uh, you're Indian American multiple times. Uh, you've s cited your Indian heritage. I understand that you're half black and half Indian, but what do you say to people who argue that you're pandering based on your race in order to win this election? That's all she had to ask, but Dana didn't do that. She was happy to move along right when Kamala Harris moved along. And that leads to the point of this video. There is clearly a double standard here, and I'm calling her two-faced Dana Bash because she's very two-faced. So again, her interview with Kamala was 18 minutes. I went through the first nine minutes and I took out all of the clips that um, were of Deanna Bash's uh, questions and her pushbacks. So there weren't really pushbacks, which is why I used hand quotes against Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. So I'm going to play this and I want you guys to leave in the comments how you would describe Deanna Bash's demeanor in these questions. I want you to notice too Right at the beginning, she's so fond and kind. It's almost like 
uh, a warm conversation. And is that a smile I see on her face? Madam Vice President, Governor Wells, thank you so much for sitting down with me and bringing the bus. The bus tour is well underway here in Georgia. You have less time to make your case to voters than any candidate in modern American history. The voters are really eager to hear what your plans are. If you are elected, what would you do on day one in the White House? You talk about, you call it the opportunity uh, economy. Yeah. It, you are well aware that right now many Americans are struggling. There's yeah. a crisis of affordability. Yeah. Yeah. One of your campaign themes is we're not going back. But I wonder what you say to voters who do want to go back when it comes to the economy specifically because their groceries were less expensive, housing was more affordable when Donald Trump was president. Not doing that so any you maintain longer. Bidenomics is a success. I, I want to get some clarity on where you stand on some key policy issues. Uh, energy is a big one. When you were in Congress, you supported the Green New Deal. And in 2019, you said, quote, there is no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Fracking, as you know, is a pretty big issue, sure. particularly in your must-win state of Pennsylvania. Sure. Do you still want to ban fracking? 2019, I believe, uh, at a town hall, you said you were asked, would you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking on your first day in office? And you said, there's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So yes. So it changed in, the, in that campaign? What made you change that position at the time? So to my eyes, Dana Bash was warm. She was very soft. She wasn't aggressive at all. She even second-guessed herself when she was citing facts. That second-to-last clip there, she's going, in a town hall, I believe, you said... And then she reads the quotes from her, from her notes. No, Dana, it's not I believe. There's no need to second-guess yourself. That's a fact. The fact that you had it in notes means that you've cross-checked your sources. You've done your research. You know what Kamala Harris said. And that's all she did during the questions. Very soft questions. Very even-tempered. Um, uh, would second-guess herself whenever she was pushing back, even though she had her notes in front of her. So... Yeah, leave me your thoughts in the comments. How would you describe Dana Bash's performance with Kamala Harris? Now, conversely, let's compare that with her performance with J.D. Vance. Take a look. And again, th that was just from the first nine minutes. Uh, so the first half of her interview with Kamala. So that was everything she said. Meanwhile, when she was with J.D. Vance, take a look at how aggressive, nasty, and... Um, diminishing, condescending she was. You guys seem to be struggling a little bit. Kamala Harris has been calling the shots. Says who? There's no evidence that Kamala Harris threw him overboard, called you and Donald Trump, and that is weird. Sure. You're saying Tim Walls doesn't have affection for his wife? I don't even understand that. They they have done both. They have both policies, and they are trying to, uh, it, to it, define yeah, you as well. If, if I you, wanna, you have been on the campaign trail questioning Tim Walls's military record. Governor Walz served 24 years. Sure. He even stayed after he could have retired because uh, of 9-11, more than the country asked of him. Do you honor his service? Uh, I will say that the Harris at Walls campaign did say that the governor misspoke. That was a month before the National Guard even announced that it was possible that they would deploy to Iraq, and it ended up being two months. He retired two months before they actually got the paperwork. You know, I, I've seen a lot of statements from veterans, including those you serve with, saying it's just untoward to be criticizing somebody who served for 24 years. Donald Trump didn't serve in the military. Uh, he received a medical draft deferment. Do you find that shameful, too? I mean, you he don't really think he, honors our so veterans. You think he, he had me first? for my service. You wrote the foreword for a new book by Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts. Sure of Project 2025. Whether or not a Trump-Vance administration would allow Mifepristone, why is not allowing her to end that pregnancy helpful or supportive of expanding families like you want it to be? Fatal and could potentially hurt her ability well, to have more kids. Well, Said she was almost a childless dog lady because she didn't happen to meet the right person until she was 40 years old. Another, Joan London, was uh, offended that you don't think she has a stake in the future of the country because she doesn't have children. Kamala Harris has two stepchildren. Pete Buttigieg and his husband have adopted twins. 
Do you recognize them as parents and more broadly as being part of families? Well, so here, like multiple times now, she's cited things people have said, and she even cited Pete Buttigieg as an example of, uh, you know, trying to emotionally manipulate viewers. Why didn't she do that with Kamala Harris? Why didn't she pull up quotes and say, well, uh, this union says this, or this worker says this, or this in- industry criticizes your position on this? It's it's all this pushback against J.D. Vance, and yet there was hardly, again, that first uh, compilation of clips I showed you of Kamala Harris, that was pretty much 95% of all of Dana Bash's talking in the first half of her interview with Kamala Harris. Uh, there were a few things I left out, like uh, one time she turned to Governor Walls and said, uh, what about you? So like about four words, right? And so I, stuff like that I didn't include. So what you saw in that first compilation, that was most of what Dana Bash uh, said to Kamala. A totally different tone, I think. Here's more. Not my, kids, my kids call her mammal. Of course she's not childless. But again, the criticism, I certainly did not call my own stepmother no, no, no. childless. No, no, no. Kamala Harris, Harris you think she's has made some bizarre statement. That's a whole other conversation. Because no, it's, people it's, didn't it's related know, to no, this. Because, because people you, didn't know as much because it was... But literally a novel sure, virus. But Danny, you asked me I about just, you, you. Okay, you've now asked me three questions about comments that I made three years ago. Uh-huh. The American I'm interviewing people you, not about Kamala Harris. Joe Biden. Then I was asking about the military record that you brought up. Nobody else did of, of Tim Walls. I can't believe I have to ask you this, but but I do because Donald Trump uh, has been attacking Kamala Harris's racial identity. Well, he questioned her racial identity. Do you believe Kamala Harris is? Black. You Please? changed your position um, on an important thing, which is Donald Trump. Of course I did. And, you, I, and so oh, why are you not a chameleon? Because there aren't media lies. He, we, we play him and we let him speak for himself. And so uh, people th- are getting it. There are media lies, such as what you guys did with this interview, claiming that it was live and putting that right on the very bottom. And some of her presuppositions were just completely false. For example, she approached J.D. Vance with a question that he was the one who raised the issue of stolen valor against Governor Tim Walls, but that's not true. As I've previously exposed in many videos that I've done before this, J.D. Vance wasn't the first person to accuse Tim Walls of stolen valor. These accusations go back over a decade against him, and that's what I've I've exposed. Veterans groups uh, have spoken out against him, again, decades before J.D. Vance was even a politician. Uh, So all of that is just lies. J.D. Vance didn't bring it up for political points. It's an actual issue that people outside of politics have cared about. This goes back to all the way before Walls was even governor, back when he served in the House, when he was in Congress. He was accused of stolen valor. So this is nothing new. I I disagree completely with her assumptions there and what she um, was trying to do to J.D. Vance. So again, what do you think? Am I crazy? Am I making it up? Or is there really a difference in how Dana Bash approached Kamala Harris and J.D. Vance? I think it was night and day. And that's why I call her Two-Faced Dana, Two-Faced Dana Bash, because which side of her are you going to get? Are you going to get the warm, soft, uh, I'm just going to ask you a question and I'm not really going to push back versus the aggressiveness of her interview with J.D. Vance? Truly two-faced. Now, even CNN was panning her interview. I, here are more clips of commentators on the network pretty much admitting that the interview, yes, was a train wreck. It wasn't a huge, I don't think she moved the ball that much forward. I don't think there's a policy separation that they've created with Biden. Obviously, she gave a kind of personal defense of him. Now, you might not like the way she answered him, but she answered him as a capable, qualified leader. And I do think <laughs> she... I think she moved the ball forward a little bit. You know, maybe she didn't score a touchdown. To- I think the two biggest issues coming out of Biden for her are the economic policies, which she clearly wants to embrace, but also the immigration policies. Dana asked her if she had anything to say about what they did for three and a half years leading up until the back and forth this year. Completely sidestepped it, did not answer it. She goes back to her time as attorney general. But again, absolutely nothing, nothing, no responsibility, no reflection at all on the day one executive actions or anything else they did for three and a half years or anything she said in her previous campaign, which was to have the most permissive immigration structure. She's trying to skip a block of time at the debate. Trump cannot allow it. Yep. And I think it's also astonishing that, again, it's been weeks since Kamala Harris became the presumptive nominee and then the nominee. So she's had all that time to prepare. And this was the best she could do. 
over a month to prepare and she she couldn't even knock it out of the park that's really sad and with a friendly media outlet at that what's even worse is that the media now so i made a there's this compilation video um of statements that have come out since the interview then a few previous statements but the media now is trying to insist that kamala harris doesn't need to speak to them she doesn't need to be open to the media um why do we have a free press if we're not going to use it to be part of a the checks and balances on the government to hold our politicians, our civil servants accountable. That's the whole point. It's your job, media, to investigate these people, to hold them to account, to hold their feet to the fire and make sure that the populace is informed. And now they're trying to argue that Kamala Harris doesn't need to speak to the press. This is insanity. Candidates don't need us as journalists to get their message out. They don't anymore in this ecosystem. In the media, we're preoccupied with like how much access, how many conversations is she going to have? I don't know how much that matters. There is risk in talking to us. There's no doubt about that. Then you hear the criticism. Oh, she has to do more interviews. She has to talk about policy. Insiders you're speaking to, they're sort of like, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. But as a campaign <laughs> hack, no. But I love you all, but I don't want her talking to you all right now. Remember what Elizabeth Warren did when she ran back in 2020? She had a white paper for every policy position under the sun. And what happened? She collapsed in the primary. So yeah. there's a belief that perhaps you put more ideas on paper, that's a bad idea. The more details you share, the more your policies are going to get picked apart. Harris has changed this from being a policy election and more of like a movement, a cultural vibes. movement. It's a vibes election. Right, it's yeah. vi that's right. Policy, vibes. Mm -hmm. Vibes election? It's a vibes election. This uh, vibes election that we're all feeling right now. It already felt like a vibes election before. Mo I just have to stop there because my blood, oh, I need to calm down. I'm too young for high blood pressure. Whew, calm down. Media, it is only a vibes election if you allow it to be. You guys are part of the checks and balances. You're supposed to be a government watchdog. You're, if you don't interview the candidates, if you don't look into their policies, if you don't report on their policies, then what are you doing? What's your job? Why are you even there? Why don't you just go get a job and work for their campaigns already? Seriously. What a joke. Most elections are vibes elections. I think every election, frankly, is a vibes election. And I think there are really only two vibes that matter in American politics. One is hope and joy, and the other is fear and anger. Yeah, just a joke, a complete joke. And that's why Kamala Harris, as unserious of a candidate as she is, is supposedly doing so well because the media is playing interference for her. It is such a shame. But as always, all of this is just my analysis and opinion, and I would love to know yours in the comments below. What do you think? Was there a difference between how Dana Bash, Two-Faced Dana Bash, approached uh, Kamala Harris's interview and Tim Walz's interview versus how she did with J.D. Vance? And that's the thing. This is just one reporter that, you know, we have concrete evidence now because Kamala Harris has only done one interview. But if a reporter is able to do that to the politicians' faces, what else what other biases are they showing outside of their interviewing capabilities? Is it what topics they choose to cover, how they choose to cover them, uh, how much time they spend on them, how much time they spend on certain controversies? I mean, there are so many ways that the media can shape the narrative without us even knowing. They are just as bad. In fact, I'd argue that they're worse than social media algorithms. A lot of people argue that um, social media algorithms are bad because we don't know much about them. They're not very, big tech is not very transparent about algorithms, and that's correct. But neither is the media. They're almost an, al there is a media algorithm. They're their own algorithm. And most people, even though they don't trust the media, don't realize just how deep this bias and how insidious and ingrained this bias truly is. And that's why we need to keep calling it out. Um, again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found something interesting in this video, please share it with your, with your family and friends. If you haven't already, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I know it's a simple thing to ask, but it really does help me in the algorithm to reach more viewers like you. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and to check out one of these videos.